Ron Spicer is referring to is a tax cut, and maybe a big one and a comprehensive one, and the kind of one that can't go anywhere unless this guy is the guy going and doing a lot of what he's doing already. The thing is, Kevin Brady has been doing this for years, folks. So, yeah, things materially changed with the election of Donald Trump, but he was quietly working behind the scenes to see that this, well, could become a reality, and it looks closer and closer to becoming just that. Kevin Brady, they man who head the House Ways and Means Committee. Sir, very good to have you. Thank Neil, Welcome. thanks for having Thank me. Thank you very much this for coming. You're brave to snow. You're brave to snow. Yeah, it is. You had yeah. no idea what you were in it's for. A little, when yeah. a little different in Texas. A little different days, in Texas. Yeah. Uh, let's get right to it then. Um, everyone seems to be thinking, and the markets certainly were buoyed by this news, that a tax cut which is looking dicey is not so dicey. The, the famous uh, conservative uh, Webb King, uh, Matt Drudge among those, saying, well, wait a minute, this looks like Republicans are or out of sorts on this. Where are you on it? Well, I think this is exciting. Uh, the president's going all in on economic growth, clearly regulatory reform, a number of those. But the announcement that uh, the fact he's going to make an announcement on tax reform uh, in just a few re weeks is critical. Do you know uh, what that announcement is? Um, I'll let him make that news, but we've been working very closely on it. Would it echo what you've been doing? Look, we're, we're going the same direction in a, in a good way. Oh, so you're not on um, different pages. So I'm pretty positive about where this is going. And for businesses that want to know this is going to happen this year, this is really important. All right. It is going to happen this year. You mentioned uh, that it, it, you're kind of on the same page. I'm quickly paraphrasing here. Yeah. Uh, but does that mean corporate tax reform, individual rate uh, changes are done together? You know, that's my strong preference because there's growth in both, you know, and there's growth in both in a major way, in the simplification, just the redesign of how we tax so we can leapfrog back to that lead pack in the world, best place on the planet for new jobs and investment. Um, so the president's going to make his announcement. I'm hopeful we move those together, but we're having a lot of discussions on timing and sequence. All right, but it is fair to say that corporate and the, then the, the individual rates are done concurrently. I sure hope so. Okay. I think that's, that, that is the best way to go. And the president is of that mindset. He's looking at all. <laughs> no, I'm not st that's I'm a not very good answer, I'm Jared. not stepping in front of this president. All let right. Me uh, let me ask you, because you were saying, and I think it's well worth pointing out, that although you've been working on this for years with some of your colleagues, everything changed back in November when Donald Trump was elected because then all of a sudden it looked very doable, right? It is. We've worked five years on the Ways and Means Committee under my predecessor, Paul Ryan, and before right. that, Dave Camp, to be ready. And last year, when Speaker Ryan pushed House Republicans in the Better Way agenda, have our solutions ready for when that window opens. And on November 9th, uh, the window didn't open. The voters threw a chair through it. Yeah. And now we have the opportunity to change the way we tax like we haven't had in a generation. All right. One of the things that's been talked about is whether you could get enough Democratic support. And, and uh, one of the enticements we were told was that an infrastructure measure, maybe a significant one, a trillion dollar measure, would, would, would be rolled in to this same thing, would it? Possibly. Um, I would love to get Democrats support on this because they're, they're seeing the same struggling economy we are. Those companies are leaving from their communities. Their college grads can't find jobs. They know there's a problem. They're in a pretty bad place right now, frankly, as a party in Congress, certainly. Um, some of their members get tax reform in a big way. I don't know if at the end of the day they engage. I hope they do, and we've invited them. Uh, but if not, uh, we're going to have to move forward this year in the most pro-growth but with or without way. them, you're doing this with or without them? Yeah, we them. have to. So the notion that the wait. president would presumably have, I don't even know if this is true, sir, but that uh, to, to entice him, he would need an infrastructure plan, you're not necessarily of that mind. Look, um, I, want, I want to bring them to the table. Um, uh, I know there's discussions on infrastructure. There's real interest there. Uh, I worry about using the tax revenues from uh, tax reform. Um, which we plowed right back into being more competitive in lower right. rates. I know that discussion is going to happen. Um, I know the direction we're going on this. And look, infrastructure is important to the economy, certainly important to the president. So let's have those, those talks. All right. The other question comes up, will the tax cuts be paid for? Yes. Uh, we designed uh, our, at least in the way, let me talk about the ways and means approach. So the approach we took was to go bold. Um, leapfrog America back into that lead pack, but do it in a way that balances within the budget, 
counting on economic growth, not slow so growth, you're not using dramatic. So dynamic account. Exact real life in in our view by an independent group, the Joint Ta Committee on Taxation. All oh, right. So others will come back and say, well, wait a minute. They're they're they're, they're counting on revenue that might not come in. You say it's going to be a reasonable analysis of the economy. There's no question. With this bold, the tax cuts and the redesign, our economy is going to grow at a big clip. Tax Foundation estimates a 9% growth in the economy, as importantly, 8% growth in wages, which is another big goal. 9% growth in the economy over when? Yeah, over a decade. Okay. Um, and then 8% growth in wages above where the economy will be. Those are pretty good starts. And uh, as I've discussed before, I think the key with the Reagan reforms is to lift the economy quickly so it can accelerate fast, get to a higher altitude as an economy. So we've designed this also to create growth early on as well. All right. Um, Stephen, it should, it should be sworn in one of these days as Treasury Secretary, had talked about the fact that everyone gets a tax cut, but it, it might not appear the same for everyone. That the rich, for example, uh, would see taxes go down, but have their deductions limited, so it's a net, net, even Stevens for them. Are you of that mindset? You know, if we, um, if we simplify the code for families, go the postcard approach that we're using, we lower the rates for everybody, but we also eliminate a lot of special provisions, many of which are used by the wealthy. And so if you get back to more of that equal, everyone knows what each other's deductions are, because they're exactly the but same. But will the rich you get see there. a net tax reduction? Um, it depends. Uh, we're going very bold on the but rate Are cuts. you, as the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, going to try to offset their, their with the rate limits cut with limits on the deductions? So we're really focused on how simple we can make the tax code. Gotcha. And so that's our primary. The middle class and working class rate cuts are going to be significant. So let's talk a little bit about what is significant. I don't know how much you can divulge here, but we have about seven rates now, right? Yeah. You want to knock them down, down to, to three. three. Yes. And can you elaborate? Yeah, we can. So President Reagan, when he did his reforms, there were 14 to 15 brackets. Right. He really cut them dramatically. But today we still have seven. That's too many. So we lower the brackets to three. We lower the rates at each level. So the top rate won't be nearly, well, 44% in real life. When you're talking about the, the surcharges Obamacare for Obamacare. Taxes, that's right. right. So, and that affects small business as well. So 33, the top level, because should the government actually take more than a third of what so you So 33 is the top level, the middle rate? 25 is the middle rate, 12 uh, is the next. All right, but now the Senate, had, what I heard out of the Senate is they had slightly different numbers, some of them slightly higher than that. So. What's, what's fixed? Well, so um, I think flattening out the brackets is critical. Lowering right. the rates is critical. There's another step we take. We protect more of the first dollars that families earn. So we s significantly increase the standard deduction. That's really important to young families grow getting started and families retiring. But we take one other step that I, I think may be the most pro-growth secret in this proposal, which is after we've lowered the the rates and flatten the brackets and protect those first dollars. For the money you earn from savings and investment, we cut that rate in half again. One, we're not a nation of savers. We should be a nation of savers. Secondly, turns out it's incredibly pro-growth in the local communities. And again, that's we're going all in for growth and simplicity. But you're talking like a big, big cut in, in tax rates, 20% down to the, on, uh, for corporations, right? Yes. And immediately those on the left come out and say, well, how are you going to pay for that? I mean, the government almost assuredly is going to be running up bigger deficits in the early years. You say what? There's only one way to do this and balance within the budget. And that is all those hundreds of special provisions and loopholes and exceptions for a few have to go away so we can lower the rates for everybody. It is a mathematical, you cannot keep all these special but how would you all set it on, on any spending, though? Would you look at, at you know, commensurate spending cuts? So that's actually spending through the tax code. I so so everything is done through the tax code. Yeah, so that is, those are eliminated right. so that everyone can get a lower tax rate. It's the only way we can make this work and be fiscally responsible as we do it. All right, uh, but, but there is a possibility deficits get worse before they get better. Possibly, but not necessarily, because right. a lot of the growth is front-ended. Uh, no, I, no well. I understand. Yeah. So let me ask you another I issue that comes up: this idea of a border tax. Some call it, uh, you know, an import tax. I, I don't know what the accurate jargon is, yeah. but, but that 
uh, it would, it, it, it's very popular among many of your colleagues. Do you like it? I do, but the point's been lost. Actually, all this goes to uh, a key issue, which is our competitors, China, Europe, Mexico, others, they're beating us in a number of different ways. They have lower rates. They don't tax worldwide. We still double tax worldwide. And they border adjust their taxes. They take their taxes off products coming to the U.S. They slap one on ours when we go. We're about the only country, other than North Korea and a few others, that don't do that. So today, a foreign product has a tax advantage over a made in America product here and overseas. So what we're saying is, let's do away with that whole international tax code and have a simple test. If your product or service is consumed in the U.S., it's taxed at an equal rate, a low 20% business rate. So it doesn't matter where it was produced, doesn't matter if it's a U.S. or foreign company, for the first time, it is equal taxation. And, and uh, Neil, that has huge benefits. One, we finally get true competition. I mean, and which is always good for the consumers. We Do you simplify. know if the president's on board with that? Because he's been of mixed mind. So he's had a couple different approaches. Right. His latest tweet was equal taxation. But there's a, a huge benefit to this as well that most people I think will welcome, which is by doing this, we eliminate every tax incentive to move your U.S. job in headquarters overseas. In fact, just the opposite, we really reestablish us as that magnet for new business investment. That's our goal. So you hear the president is on board with doing a lot of the broad blueprint things you look at, would such a tax, if and when it comes to pass, be retroactive to January 1? So we want the most growth, and if we move quickly, I think it makes sense to go retroactive. If it's toward the end of the year, um, uh, we'll have to take a look at that, okay. but we want the growth to occur, and, and I think the most exciting news is you've got a president willing to lead on tax reform, and we have waited 30 right. years frankly, to be in this position. And a guy in, in the House has been doing it for years. It's exciting. Kevin Brady, thank you very, very much.